does for someone in great need. This is Emma's story. Come into this holy place to worship God. Love, 
so celebrities come from a lot of different places. They can be musicians, they can be television stars or movie stars, or or athletes. Me, myself, I'm a big Cub fan. So whenever I go to Wrigley Field, you know, I like to wear my player's jersey with my favorite player's name on the back, you know? And you can always tell who's the young ones because they have like Bryant, Rizzo, Baez on the back of their jerseys. But people like me, we wear Grace, Sandberg, Maddox, an older generation of Cub players. But we just want to be like a celebrity a lot of times. You know, we want to know what they're about, what they're doing, where they live, how they dress, everything like this. So we like those celebrities. But, as her answer was, the one celebrity that we should be really at the top of our list is God and Jesus. And you might think, okay, Ruth, where are you going with this? Today's scripture out of Luke 4 tells the story of Jesus in his early ministry. Jesus was going around and he was doing all kinds of sermons and he was healing people and he was helping people out. He was talking about love and he was getting a lot of crowds. People were coming from all over to hear Jesus. He was pretty popular. Jesus was a celebrity. So, hopefully if Jesus, you know, showed up right now, we'd ask for his autograph. We'd maybe get a little selfie, me and Jesus in a selfie. But even if Jesus is not appear, we can be fans of Jesus by doing things that Jesus did. So what are some of the things that we could do to show we're fans of Jesus? What would Jesus do that we could do? Spread his words, definitely. We can talk to other people. We can tell them the good news that we love our neighbors, that, you know, Jesus is real and we have forgiveness of our sins through Jesus. What else can we do that Jesus does? What else can we do? Help people. Definitely, Jesus did a lot of helping during his ministry. And if we're a fan of Jesus, we can help other people. We can support our food pantry next week. I do believe it's food pantry Sunday. And we can bring food for the food pantry and that food can go to help people that maybe don't have as much food. So helping others is a great way to be a fan of Jesus. What else could we do? Oh my gosh, you guys are rocking. I'm a fan of yours now, you guys are celebrities. She said pray for others. That's Huge. We never know what somebody's going through. Somebody might be really, really sad today or might be really happy because of good news that they've got. But we can pray for them. So let's be like a fan of Jesus right now and let's do a little prayer. Okay? Let's bow our heads and do a little prayer. Dear Lord, we come together today and we praise you. We're big fans. And so please come into our hearts and show us how we can live our lives as true fans of Jesus. Amen.
So that man stands up with a lot of courage and speaks his opinion. The second painting was The Freedom of Worship, which I think is my favorite of the four. It really is necessary to look at a close-up version of this painting, which depicts eight persons of different faiths in a moment of prayer. You notice some are looking up, some have their heads bowed, some have eyes open, some have eyes closed. But each in their own way are communicating with their God. The fourth one is the freedom from want that captures a family probably at a holiday feast where the matriarch is bringing in the roasted turkey ready to set it down to have it carved by the patriarch of the family. And then finally, there's the freedom from fear depicts a mother tucking in a little one while the father looks down with love over her shoulder. Those last two paintings, the freedom of, from want and the freedom from fear, depict Rockwell, Rockwell, Rockwell's vision of the idyllic home life. It's ironic because Rockwell himself did not experience that. He, as well as several members of his family, experienced times of deep depression in a time where there wasn't a lot of understanding about what that meant, nor an understanding about appropriate treatment for those who suffered from depression. His biographer, De Deborah Solomon, talks about also that Rockwell married three times. He never really experienced a time of joy in those marriages. He avoided organized religious activity, and yet often in his paintings, he depicts the peace and the solitude that one can gain from that. But what Rockwell does help for us is to envision a hope that we might have, a hope from attaining our human potential. So maybe he hoped for a perfect home life. And so he dared to believe that it was possible, even though he himself really didn't experience that. He showed us what home life could be at its best, even when he did not know what that was. He helped us to remember those happier times when we were loved and accepted in our homes and communities just as we are. I oftentimes remember those stories that my own family would tell about memories from years gone by. But with my father being an only child, we didn't oftentimes have an affirmation of that, except at the family reunions when his first cousins would supplement his visions. Often dad would talk about the times where his grandfather, my great grandpa, would take the boys out, teach them how to do uh, shotguns, and it seemed to be like the best of times, but from Mary Ann, one of my dad's cousins, she also shared the memory of great grandma not being happy with the boys or with her husband teaching them how to use shotguns. Rockwell helps us to set an ideal high even when the reality doesn't quite measure up. What if Rockwell painted the scripture from Luke chapter 4? Jesus has, early in his ministry, returned to his hometown of Nazareth to read scripture and to preach in the hometown synagogue. That 
that's where the people that were worshiping with him that day thought that they knew him best. They, along with him, and the generations before them had waited more than 400 years for Messiah to come. 400 years of silence since the end of the Old Testament writing, where people were needing encouragement to keep being faithful. But finally, the answer to prayer had been answered in their presence. Jesus read from the scroll of the book of Isaiah and then sits down. And that's where preaching happens in a synagogue when you sit down. And he said, today the scripture has been fulfilled in your presence. The people attending synagogue that day probably perceived themselves as the religious insiders thinking they had the edge on what God required. And yet Jesus barely, very clearly says that he has been sent by God to preach the good news to the people on the fringes. The people that had no voice, the people that were looked down upon. And for the hometown crowd to hear those words, at the very least, they were angered. How would Rockwell have depicted that? The changing of emotion between being proud of Jesus, who was raised in Nazareth, to the anger when, in their faces, he said, this is why God sent me not for your benefit, but for everyone's benefit. He was happy to be home. But in that small town, and we think at that time it was probably about 400 people, here Jesus was determined, despite what others thought of him, he was determined to do the work that God called him to. And so he notifies his hometown crowd. And he notifies us that the future ministry that he intends to have and the types of people that would be drawn to him, but also repelled by him. Would we have cherished Rockwell's painting of that? It would have been a tall task for him to have completed that painting. You see, home is where our highest ideals rest. A place where we hope that we are accepted as we are. Even when it's not our reality. And yet that hope that keeps us going help us, helps us to keep alive that promise that Jesus is coming again. Even when our own pain, our own rejection, and our own misunderstanding at the hands of those who should, who should know us best hurt us the most deeply. Jesus dashed the hopes of that crowd that 